What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Film Chunky Live. Oh, is it running super smooth? Is it buttery? Is it no? It's just, it's great. Look at that. The stream is working so great right now. Look at that. No choppiness. Look at me go. Look at me go. I'm going to get real animated tonight. Yes, guys, I appreciate you guys clicking in and joining me on this Tuesday, which normally I don't do Tuesday streams anymore, but. Yesterday, sadly, my computer was like, I can't handle the, I can't handle all your awesomeness anymore, Dave. I can't handle it. I can't. I can't handle you in 4K. We can't catch you in 4K anymore. So yes, guys, I downgraded. I downgraded to 1080p. And that seems like that's where we're going to keep it right about now. I mean, hopefully I still look as pretty. But uh, yeah, so there we go, guys. Cheers, and thank you for joining. Thank you for joining me again, I guess you could say. But uh, yeah, make sure you guys smash that like, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, do all that stuff. And if you want to become a member too, you know, become a member, be part of the Film Junkie community, do it. And, uh, you know, we'll talk. So, yeah, we'll talk about it. But uh, yeah, guys, um, yeah, if you didn't know yesterday, yeah, the stream didn't, it was just, was not working at all. So I had to like stop and then I was hoping to like restart it. But then I was like, no, nah, I just need to, like I said, I need a downgrade because the output was just way too much for the computer. I think it was just finally just like, stop it, stop it. So we should be all good now. We should be all good now. All right. So here we go. Um, let me go ahead and do that. There we go. What's going on, Mr. Kenneth? Hope your Tuesday's going well. Happy 85th. That's right. That's why I'm wearing this. I'm wearing this, wearing my Superman shirt, and since we're going to be talking about the Flash, it's my Superman and Flash racing shirt. There you go. So, thought that'd be perfect for the occasion today. Happy uh, 85th anniversary to Superman, the Man of Steel. That was all happening today, which of course we'll go over some of that. What's going on, Rez? Did you uh, see Zach say one day? Well, I didn't see. I heard him say something like that. But uh, yeah, talking about the uh, the Lois and uh, Bruce thing, the Broes. Thing, which, of course, we'll talk about that, too. We'll go over that interview as well as talk about, of course, full, full circle. we got some more details that are going to be coming out, so that's good. What's going on, Mr. Ryan? Good to see you. we got Miss Lisa Jackson here. Yes, of course, always play the Let's Get Nuts drop. Tet, what is happening? we got Eric here. Cool. Good to see you. we got Andrew. It's going pretty good. Not too shabby. You know what? To be honest... You know, I mean, after like last night's debacle, you know, and just kind of fixing everything last night and today, you know, because it wasn't just like a simple fix. I had to reformat like everything to fit, you know, 1080p back to this. So I think we'll be good. But other than that, I had a pretty good day. I worked a little bit and got a lot done. That's always nice. That's why I like that's what I like about my job is I could work a little bit out to work a full day and still get a lot done. Pretty good. Howdy, Miss Stephanie T. Always good to see you. Thank you for joining. We got Eric right here. Yeah, everything's so much smoother. Like when I'm going through all the uh, the chat and everything, it's not it's not choppy anymore. So, yeah, my poor computer was just pushing it way too hard, way too hard. You know, what can you do? Hey, what's going on, Galactic Fearsome? Good to see you. No, that is not an AI. That's not AI. I actually made that myself. I haven't jumped into the whole AI thing really yet. Uh, I know Ben. He's uh, showed me things when it comes to AI. Just haven't jumped on that bandwagon yet. I mean, I'm sure I will eventually. But now I just basically photoshopped all that and put like this filter on on the thumbnail. So that's why it looks like that. So Tony Movie G Chappy D9 Neil Blomkamp fan. What's happening? Hey, Dave, you seriously need to have actual Phantom and Turf Nation on the vodka stream. They call out all the wokeness nonsense and they can and they community is called the Phantom Initiative. OK. I mean, I'll look into it. I mean, even though I hate the woke, I hate using the term woke. That kind of gets on my nerves, you know. So we got Mr. Fear Jason here. What's going on? One. Much love to you. We got Kat here. Hey, that's right. She hasn't been here for a little bit. So welcome back, Kat. Always good to see you, too. Let's see who else we got. We Mr. Scott McClellan. Yes, I'm actually doing my YouTube things. I know. I know, no, no, no Batman fan animated. I know, first I wasn't feeling good on Sunday, then my computer wasn't feeling good last night. But I, 
Now it's all good. Now it's all good. What's going on, Nate? Just saw Creed 3. Really enjoyed it. Yep. Creed 3 is a great movie, you know, and, and we're going to talk about one of the actors because sadly, who knows what's going to be happening with him. So, oi, oi, oi. All right. We got Northman here. I can't wait for this movie. Come on. I know, right? And people are going to be watching The Flash next week. It's going to be crazy. So, all right. Yes, 1080. You, you, you know what that is, right, Russ? Uh, you know what that is. I hope. Uh, hopefully it's... Hopefully you know what that is. Okay. So anyways, all right. Continuing on. Hey, what's going on? Happy Superman Day. Mr. Uh, Mr. Jose, good to see you. You know, I mean, hey, I did kind of catch the uh, the Dodgers losing last night to the Mets, but it's okay because the Giants just keep on losing. They're probably going to lose tonight, too. They blew another lead, so it's not like, you know, not like I can actually, you know, back up my team or anything like that, so... It's fine, but thank you for joining, Jose. What's going on, nerd girl? Jean. All right. Happy Superman Day. Happy Tuesday. Yes. Always good. Woke is the word, right? Woke, woke, woke. Yo, what's going on, darkness? What's up? Dave can't stay, but just wanted to say hello and have a good stream. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, just very much. They're this. The Giants can't hold a lead. I, I've watched games, I just watch games, and they're up like 6 nothing, 4 nothing, something, and they just blow the freaking lead. Like, what is happening? Come on, guys. What's going You're killing me here. You're killing me. So, yeah. But, yeah, the Dodgers are struggling, too, so that, that brings me hope. But those damn Diamondbacks, we're going to have to worry about those freaking Diamondbacks. Stream on a Tuesday, yes, because yesterday's stream did not work too well, Amparo, but thank you for joining. We got Mr. Ahoy, hoy, Mr. Jason McKenzie working at the moment. Yeah, good. Yeah, well, stream should be uh, smooth sailing because it had to downgrade to 1080p. Yes, first world problems. Excited for the stream. Let, yeah, all right, good to see you, good to see you. Let's see, Dodgers are young, Just uh, they just got to, yeah. I mean, that's that same thing with the Giants. we got, like, one OG, and the rest are just young. So it's just the way it is. But, yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for your patience and everything, you know, when it comes to all this. You know, just, uh, yeah, just really appreciate it. Yesterday was like, damn it. And it was kind of frustrating what happened. But, hey, we're all good, and we're going to be, uh, let's go ahead and get to it, man. Let's get to those tweets. Let's get to the tweets. All right. So I was starting off yesterday, obviously talking about this right here, and I, I wanted to emphasize that, yes, this is what I look like without my shirt off. I'm just saying, Fear Jason knew exactly what I, you know, what I look like without my shirt. I mean, I don't watch Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I didn't really, I think I briefly, I watched a little bit of the live action movie, which was awful, but uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much exactly what I look like without my shirt off. Just saying, just saying, and sometimes I wear ripped pajama pants just like that. And, uh, you know, when I get old and gray, just like uh, Michael Keaton at 70 years old, this is probably what I'll look like, right? The guy's aged pretty well, so, yeah. All right, scrolling through. All right, we got some footage right there, but, of course, we'll talk about all that. This is always pretty cool, too, the side-by-side -side of Eric Stoltz, because if some of you don't know that Eric Stoltz was actually cast as Marty McFly before... Well, not before, but they wanted Michael J. Fox, couldn't get Michael J. Fox because of family ties, and then they cast Eric Stoltz, and then Stoltz just wasn't working, and they filmed like six weeks or something like that, or two months when it came to him, and then uh, they decided, hey, they got Michael J. Fox, and yeah, there you go, so I love that. Eye of Cinema showing off that. We got Reeves FX showing off his 89 Batman costume that he's created. So cool. You, you guys know I love that logo oh so much. But uh, Cal looks great. Everything looks great when it comes to that right there. And then hopefully you guys checked out my first reaction review, of course, of uh, Renfield, which I enjoyed, which I enjoyed very much so, very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Patton. Hi from the UK. Haven't caught a live in a while. Well, yeah, well, thank you for joining, dude. I, I could see you're wearing a hat right there. Looks like I'm wearing, I'm wearing a similar hat right here. That was, uh, that was like a couple of years ago when I had Zach on the stream doing that. Still have that hat, of course. And then my guy, I mean, I guess Amazon, you get all, you get the IP from MGM and it's like, why not? Let's just remake everything or continue everything i don't know but yes amazon is reportedly in development from mgm ip right here 
We're gonna get more Legally Blonde. I don't know if it's gonna be a remake or they're gonna bring back Reese Witherspoon. Probably should bring back Reese because when you think Legally Blonde, you think of her. Poltergeist, which are doing another Poltergeist. We have already have a remake with Sam Rockwell that came out and it was it was okay, but it was, man, eh, whatever. Um, and then of course we have RoboCop. RoboCop, I mean, they, we had that remake, which I actually enjoyed with Joel Kinnaman. And I'm thinking like, okay, you could do something there, sure. Possibly, but yeah, I mean, I guess Stargate, never watched the show, really liked the movie. They could probably do something there. Thomas Crown Affair, I watched that remake. I didn't watch, I didn't watch the original, but I watched the remake. Barbershop, apparently that's going to be a series. And then The Magnificent Seven is also going to be a series, which it was a series at one point in the early 2000s, late 90s, I remember. But I remember uh, the remake um, that came out, what, a few years ago with Denzel and Chris Pratt and everything. That was a great movie. But yeah, I mean, they're just like, hey, we got all this IP. Might as well do something with it. So, and they're doing something with it. Doing something. And then this is a pretty cool poster from uh, Hypnotic, Ben Affleck, Robert Rodriguez. Can't wait for this movie. The trailer looked excellent. But yeah, we saw all the dominoes and we got Benny Affleck right there in the middle of uh, those right there. Nicholas Holt. So obviously he's been doing interviews and junkets and whatever for Renfield. But of course, naturally, people are talking about the fact that, yes, when it came to Matt Reeves' Batman, it was down to Robert Pattinson and Nicholas Holt, if you did not know that. That's what it was down to, those two actors. And, uh, yeah, he said he screen tested for Batman and didn't get it. He talked about that with Variety and more right here. I screen tested for Batman, didn't get it. Screen tested for Top Gun, didn't get it. Then I got the call from Tom Cruise. How about Mission Impossible? Got it. Then I had to drop out because I was attached to do more of The Great. So... My God, Nicholas Holt, you poor bastard. You almost got Batman. Didn't oh, You probably almost got Top Gun. And then Tom Cruise calls you and goes, how about Mission Impossible? He goes, yes. And then has to drop out of Mission Impossible. Ah, poor guy. And by the way, he's great in Renfield. Just saying, he's absolutely excellent in Renfield. So absolutely excellent. Of course, we'll talk about all that stuff. We've got a Jurassic Park poster right there. The new Metallica album came out. Been listening to it like ever since it came out. It's fantastic. So Metallica fans, go check it out if you haven't. Of course, you probably have. All right, we'll talk about that. And then speaking of the Batman, uh, Colin Farrell needed a haircut in order to wear the Penguin wig piece in the Batman. So this is according to Mike Marino right here. Colin shaved half of his head like St. Francis, you know? He had to walk around town with a hat on all the time because he looked like a monk, but it worked out good. I wonder if he is he doing that for the new for the Penguin series? Do you have to shave his head again or did they construct something different? I don't know. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Uh, we'll talk about that. Of course, uh, we got David Ayer, you know, calling out somebody, you know, that deleted their tweet, which is funny. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. The Boys, of course, has wrapped, and this was a director right there, wrapping, you know, video behind the scenes. We got some behind the scenes. Uh, the Rebel Moon vi visual effects crew shirts give us a first look at Harmada. Remember, guys, Zach put a character in Rebel Moon called Harmada. Not Hamada, but Harmada, which is funny. Hermana is described as a lethal and ageless half-woman, half-spider that preys on vulnerable children as a twisted vengeance for the loss of her own. So we see that right there. Well, look at that. And we got, uh, I think that's uh, one of the robots that's right there. I'm not sure what that is, but yeah, that's pretty sweet. So, you know, it's not much when it comes to Rebel Moon, but it's something. It's something. Uh, Brie Larson has confirmed that she's wearing uh, a Chantel t-shirt bra in the viral uh, in her viral crop top shot and Mar why why did we need to know this people were people were going crazy about this shot right here why why were they going crazy about this because there's like this weird hatred for brie larson and i will admit that sometimes when she talks about certain things it's like hey no please no don't don't say stuff like that please what are you doing you know i'll, I'll admit that but I don't have this hatred for Brie Larson like some people do because when it can't when it comes to the Marvel's trailer, apparently it got really it got bombarded by dislikes and dislikes. 
we're in an interesting time when it comes to CBMs because fans want more CBMs. They want better CBMs. And they think like, okay, so if we trash like existing C CBMs without even caring, does that, I don't know. It's all, it's a weird time, you know, but I wanted to add, like, my question would be, why did they have her pose like this? Why, why is she like doing a flexing Peter Pan pose in that shot in the trailer? I was like, that's what I found weird. I didn't care about her, her bra or her, you know, tank top that she's wearing. I was just wondering why she's like standing like that. I mean, like, I get it. She's in shape. She worked out. I mean, she looks good. Her body looks good. Sure, she's fit. But I was like, it looked a little weird that she's like, yeah, that's right. I'm going to stand like this. I mean, I don't know. It just seemed a little weird. But anyways, I think she looks good. I think she looks good right there. It's just kind of weird. That, like she was like doing a mad flex, mad flex, which I'm like, OK, show it off. Show off the guns. Show off the guns. Yeah. I don't mind it at all. I don't mind it at all. See, even fear. Does that look better? Does that look better? Huh? There's me as bat fleck in the flash. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Protect this man. Protect this man, please. We always say it. We love David F. Sandberg. My God, I, I love this guy. But David F. Sandberg has given his review of his movie, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. And he gives it a half star. Just a half. That's right. Billy and Shazam! have different personalities. I really wish someone would point this out to the director. Unwatchable! You gotta love this guy. You gotta love this guy. Because, you know, I mean, we always... Obviously, lately, he's been talking about filmmaking and showing videos and doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff and talking about it and, 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 and tweeting and responding to, well, not really fans, but, you know, the haters out there. And I love the fact that he took it upon himself to to review his movie and say it like that, because, yes, a lot of people were commenting big time about, you know, and I, and I was getting frustrated, too, when. People kept on talking about how Zachary Levi just like ruined the movie because people have this hatred towards Zachary Levi. And I kept on going like, OK, like Zachary Levi didn't go above David F. Sandberg's head to act like he wanted to. Like, oh, no, Dave, I I'm going to act like this as opposed to what you want me to act like. It's like, no, that's not the case. And I just always hated that, that people like putting the full blame on uh, on uh, on Zachary Levi for how he's like how Shazam is and everything and I you know and I even said it in my review that I wish that when it came to Shazam I wish he acted a little bit more not like a child like more not like a child more like how Billy Batson is because obviously he's older now he's like almost 18 in the movie and I I, I kind of wish that too but uh, you know, but everybody was putting the blame on on Zachary Levi, which was interesting. And I was just like, well, that's what David F. Sandberg wanted, though. That's what, how he wanted Zachary Levi to play the character. But, pe you know, but pe people this is but, but I guess you could you could look at it like people don't hate David F. Sandberg. They hate Zachary Levi. So they're putting it all on him. But I think he's kind of calling that out. And he's just uh, kind of saying that, yeah, Billy and Shazam have different personalities. So. There's that review right there. I thought it was great. And David F. Sandberg, I, I again, uh, he's a very talented filmmaker, and I can't wait to see what he does next. And I think, yeah, he's done doing the superhero stuff for now. And I just, I, I, I can't wait. Can't wait to see because he's a very talented filmmaker. So leave him alone. Leave him alone. And then, yeah, it was Jack Jackie Robinson Day over the weekend on Saturday, I believe it was. So everybody wore 42, and it was pretty sweet. Um, hey, Strange World and Lightyear uh, lost $152.4 million and, a, and $106 million respectively. So, yeah, you know, we got Super Mario Brothers that is kicking ass right now in the box office, most likely going to make a billion. And Strange World and Lightyear, even though I enjoyed Lightyear, I didn't see Strange World. I enjoyed Lightyear. I thought it was actually a good fucking movie, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah, they both lost a lot of money. But I think that was partially because Disney just didn't know how to freaking market those movies. I don't know. I don't know. Pretty crazy. 
Let's see. Keep going. Yes, more Jackie Robinson stuff. And yeah, uh, hopefully you guys watched. Uh, you got the vodka stream right here. Had Mr. Ryan Anderson on. Good times. Always fun on the vodka stream. We got Tom Hardy right here on uh, the set of Gareth Edwards' Havoc, which you know this movie's going to be kick-ass. Gareth Edwards, Tom Hardy. Come on. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Tom Hardy, just like uh, being Tom Hardy. Got some blood on his face, getting a little coffee. Love it. Absolutely love it. Ready the Armada. Ready the Armada. So obviously, you know, when it comes to the shirt, but uh, obviously, uh, hopefully you guys got your shirt for the full circle event that Zack Snyder put out there that was designed by Jim Lee. And uh, Ray Porter, of course, you know, quote tweeted it and said, ready their Armada. And naturally, some fans thought that it meant something else, which it didn't. But and, you know, Ray was like, hey, you know, you do know there's a, an event happening in a couple of, you know, not, it's, yeah, it's not this weekend, but next weekend. And it was just kind of funny because, yeah, there was a lot of people that thought he meant something else. Not everything means something else, guys. But uh, good on Ray. Good on Ray for doing that. Let's see. Oh, yeah. David Ayer. This scene, as I shot it, Dr. Quinzel shoots the trucker. So somebody was um, asking, Mr. Flash Mountain 46290 said, it's concept art. That doesn't mean it was in the film. And they're talking about this shot right here. This concept art, where you have, uh, you know, concept art of that shows the Joker shooting the truck driver right there. And obviously we see the concept art and look what it looks like. It doesn't look exactly how it looked in the film, but we got to remember, too, we saw the behind the scenes of this. Release the freaking air cut, man. Release it! But yeah. And I don't know if anybody actually has that. Uh, I didn't pull it up, but uh, yeah. If you actually look it up, you can actually find that this was, in fact, shot. This is when when she's not Harley Quinn yet, but the concept art shows her kind of like Harley Quinn-esque. But if you actually watch the behind the scenes, it's the sh it's on the director's cut when she chases him down. And, you know, and he goes, if I wasn't uh, if I wasn't so insane, I think or if I wasn't so crazy, I think you were insane, which is a good line that the Joker says. Um and yeah, I mean, it, it gets a little more violent than that, too. Uh, but I think there was like a shot, too, where like, yeah, she shoots the trucker and it's actually Harley Quinzel that's done it. You could look it up and um, see that he actually shot something when it came to that and the motorcycle and everything like that. So but it's actually but they changed the concept art to the fact that she actually shoots the trucker. And you actually see that in the behind the scenes footage which is cool, but uh, yeah. So David Ayer just confirming that, yes, there is that shot, literal shot of uh, Harley Quinn shooting the trucker. And it, we got to see that. We just got to see that. God damn it. We got to see it. David Ayer still pushing that Ayer cut, which we want to see. Speaking of box office, John Wick Chapter 4 now sits at $349.7 million worldwide. Has become the biggest film in the franchise. That's right. And apparently they're going to be taking a break when it comes to John Wick. We're going to get the ballerina movie with uh, Ana de Armas. So at least we got that coming out. At least we got that. Um, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that. I thought this was funny right here. Somebody was asking what's the best shot of any Batman film. Bat butt! We got the bat butt! Remember, we, this is from Batman Forever. You know, good old Sh Schumacher was like, gotta show the bat butt. There you go. <laughs> That's funny. Don't be this guy. Don't be this guy. Come on, guys. Don't be this guy. Trying to press, impress this lady right here. Don't be this guy, please. You know, if there's a wall, just, you, know, you don't have to. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, oh. Oops. That had to hurt a little bit. Yeah. Walk it off. Walk it off. Don't do that. Just don't do that. Don't do that. Just don't do that. And then this is pretty sweet right here. Photography. Love this uh, kind of photography right here. Look at this shot. I mean, that's the establishing the shot right there. And then, of course, just taking a quick picture. And then, of course, doing, like, photography things. You got to love it. Look at that. Look at how badass that looks. Got to love that. And then you got to love videos like this. I mean, yeah, we're, you know, this is symbolic of work harder, not smart, or work, uh, work smarter, not harder. That's what we're doing. Look at that. See? Just do it like that. Just do it like that. 
It's all about working smarter, not harder. Right there, guys. Embodies that. And then look at this. Oh, man. Tempted. Tempted. GameStop exclusive. I don't know. I, oh, man. My, my, my wallet... My wallet is going, don't do it. Don't do it, Dave. Don't do it. My wallet, my wallet's like, oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Whew. But yeah, I do want this emblem and the ring. You get the ring too. You get the ring and the emblem. Ah, replica. Ah, I think it's like what? I don't even know how much it is, but it's probably already sold out by now. But man, ah, so tempted to get that. So tempted to get that. Oh. It's only $65. That's right. It's only $65. Oh, I might, I might, I might pull the trigger. I might have to pull that trigger. I don't know. We've got a new squad cast episode when it comes to the Batman scene by scene. So go check it out for Mr. Scott McClellan and, and Tim over there. Rebecca Ferguson says Dune part two is better than part one. Of course, that's me saying it without seeing it. That is me saying it based on what I've read and what I've seen and what I've filmed. I think it's going to be better. There you go. So, I mean, obviously, it probably will be better. And then speaking of the Batman, this is pretty hilarious right here. I love this. I love this. Do I have that on? Yeah, okay, just make sure. I'm not paying for this one. Pay for this. <laughs> That's freaking paying. funny. Come on. That's a funny, quick video right there. This Batman this just shows up right there. Pay Come on. This. Good. <laughs> good that's good it's good costume too by the way we got some more art we got nightwing 90s right there from mr phil cho that's pretty cool and then of course more ben affleck more ben affleck in hypnotic right there cool poster this is so true no context humans is like my new favorite twitter handle right now but yeah air vents in real life which are very very small and gross air vents in movies of course you could fit up yeah it's what a tv dinner feels like Live action Knuckles series starring Idris Elba at Paramount Plus has ensembled its cast, including Sonic movie stars uh, Adam Polly and Tika Sumpter right there. So, yeah, we're going to get a series when it comes to Knuckles. Good stuff. That's going to continue on. We've got some cool art right here from Mr. Uh, Mufasa showing some Batman, a Batman statue, which I would love that too, please. Would absolutely love that. Of course, we'll talk more about that. We got a new Boogeyman poster, which this movie looks... It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. It's a good tagline. Stephen King. And, and yes, guys, I don't even know where it's at right now. Where is, where, is, where, is, where is Super Mario Brothers at right now? It's past $700 million worldwide. There's no way that this movie does not cross a billion dollars. The movie is going to cross a billion dollars. Now it's going to be about animated video, <laughs> video game adaptations. We talked about that last week, how this movie is just going to be blowing up the box office it doesn't it's not going to stop anytime soon at all there's no way that it does no way that it does and i'm loving the fact that that that's happening because i really enjoyed the movie um and then i'm curious to see where they take the movie where they take the franchise where they take what do they do when it comes to the universe and uh yeah the movie's just gonna i would say what a billion in a couple of weeks probably it's got great legs it's got great legs so we'll see and then, yes, guys, uh, they finally, I mean, it was like the worst kept secret ever. But the first screening of The Flash, of course, is going to be at CinemaCon a week from today. A week from today. Worlds collide in The Flash when Barry uses his superpowers to travel back in time in order to change the events of the past. But when his attempt to save his family inadvertently alters the future, Barry becomes trapped in a reality in which General Zod has returned, threatening annihilation, and there are no superheroes to turn to. That is, unless Barry can coax a very different Batman out of retirement and rescue an imprisoned Kryptonian, albeit not the one he's looking for. Ultimately, the to save the world that he is in and return to the future that he knows, Barry's only hope is to race for his life. But will make what? But will making the ultimate sacrifice be enough to reset the universe? That is the question. Luck and God. Hey, this is what Flounder looks like in a Little Mermaid. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I, I, geez, I, it's, it's, I, okay, there it is, flounder, there's your flounder right there, I don't know, the Little Mermaid movie, I don't really care for it, like I said, I've told you guys, I wasn't really big on the, uh, on the Disney movies when I was a kid, 
and the Little Mermaid movie, I'm like, eh, about. So, there, that's why, yeah. I mean, it's kind of creepy, but I mean, they're trying to make it kind of realistic, so why not? You think the movie's going to flop? I don't know if that movie's going to flop. This is pretty funny, right? <laughs> this made me laugh right here. This made me laugh. You know, that's pretty funny. Why would you put it right there? And I guess I'm doing something right, guys. I'm doing something right. Because Geekosity, and I guess Mr. Sutton, was not a fan. Again, they keep on, I mean, it's they're still mad about the Zack Snyder interview that I had on the Vodka stream a few weeks ago. But, uh, yeah, apparently, uh, when it comes to Geekosity, uh, somebody sent me this right here. Uh, they said, hey, Dave, uh, looks like uh, this dude at Geekosity has a problem with you. Yeah, I guess that means I'm doing something right. And the caption says right here, or the paragraph says, unfortunately, two of his recent YouTube interviews were poorly conducted. There was only one interview, dumbass. It was, I just cut it up into different clips when it came to certain things for YouTube shorts. I don't know if you know how YouTube works, but they have this thing called shorts where you condense something in less than a minute and then... You link it to the entire thing, which was like a, you know, a 50 minute interview, almost an hour. But uh, anyways, one which omitted his thank you to Warner Brothers Pictures execs Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi for allowing the upcoming theatrical screening of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, um, didn't fit that into the clip, but, you know, he was thanking and praising Warner Brothers, which they work for which I keep on saying they do work for that. Sorry that I omitted the names. My bad. My bad. I just thought, you know, okay, we'll just have it where he's praising one of ours. Predictably, oh, predictably, the media leached onto the shorter altered video. On the contrary, that it made, uh, that it made seem, oh, yeah, there's a little typo there little typo, you know, you might want to proofread your articles before you, you know, you hit post, okay? Proofread, because, yeah, on contrary, that it made seem, that it made seem, DC Studios co-CEO uh, James Gunn, who rebooted the Snyderverse, is responsible, even though Zack Snyder exclusively gave credit to DeLuca and Abdi. Zack Snyder explained, that's not what it's, that's not what it seemed like. I just fit in at the very end when I made a joke that James Gunn's going to be joining the Vodka stream. And then he goes, you know, what? James is a buddy. And I just wanted to fit that in because he made that comment. But uh, yeah, there you go, guys. Geekosity for you. Zeke, geekosity for you. You got to love that. Got to love that. Again, the full interview is still online. You could watch it from start to finish. No edits. Every one of the shorts that I did linked it to there. But these guys are still, still got a hissy fit when it comes to it. So, fuck you very much. All right. David Ayer, Light Beyond the Darkness. Pretty cool little, uh, even got noise right there from a little cave. A little cave. Of course, we'll talk more about that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that. Scott McClellan. You guys saw this video? Hopefully you did. Right now, you can follow over at Squawcast Media on YouTube. And so Scott right here, uh, watch this video. I'm sure you guys have watched it, but yes. Um, obviously, Scott's going to be showing up. I'm actually going to meet Scott in person. Same with Steven, same with Andre, same with some other people too. It's going to be a crazy weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend. But uh, Scott's going to be pretty much doing a, he's going to be vlogging the whole time. I'll probably do some vlogging myself, but Scott's going to be basically call to adventure, call to adventure that he's going to be doing right there. So follow him. He'll be posting videos. We'll all be posting stuff, but Scott will probably post more than I will. So follow him. It's going to be great. And I'm going to be keeping as one element of my coverage of going to full circle. So there you go. So follow Scott. I'll be in those videos, I'm sure. So, And uh, we got some reshoots happening for Barbie. So we got, hey, look at that. Look at that. There she is. She's beautiful. Um, we got some reshoots happening, so that's cool. Um, okay, so we got... Huh. All right. <laughs> Russo Brothers open to directing... Brave and the Bold. Who wants that? Anybody? Anybody? Do 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 caca poo poo. Huh? 
Anyone? Anyone? Is it? Or is it? Yeah. Which one is it? But yeah, uh, according to, uh, so the Russo brothers, basically, um, the Russo brothers were interviewed by comicbook.com and they asked about James Gunn and what's happening over there at DC. And they asked, okay, so say James Gunn was going to call you, which one of the DCU chapter one announcements on the slate, which one would you want to do? And they actually expressed that they'd be down for directing Brave and the Bold. Now I'm not, nothing against the Russo brothers. At all, I think they're talented. I think they uh, they do some. I mean, Captain America: Silver uh, Civil War, not Civil War, but uh, Winter Soldier, is pro- arguably the best, in my opinion, a lot of people's opinion, the best MCU movie. And then I would actually follow that up with Infinity War, possibly too, and then Iron Man, and you know whatever. But uh, you know, so when it comes to when it comes to the MCU movies, I mean, obviously. They're, they've done, like, the best ones, in my opinion. Now, would I want them to come over and do Batman Brave and the Bold? Eh, I'm still kind of... I still want Raimi. I mean, we talked about how Sam Raimi... Somebody asked Sam Raimi about a possible possibility of him doing a Batman film and then explained to him that, yes, there's, a, there's Matt Reeves and then there's a separate one that doesn't have a director yet, and he expressed that he might have to contact James Gunn. So I was just kind of... I don't know. I don't know if I'd want the Russo brothers, but then again, maybe if they're not stranglehold to the the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they don't have Kevin Feige and James Gunn just lets them do their thing. Maybe. I don't know. I am on the reservation about it. I'm pretty, uh, you know, and James Gunn said right here because somebody asked James Gunn. He said, uh, the Russo brothers just stated they are indeed interested in a DCU project. Would you be opposed to that idea? And James Gunn said, no, I love those guys. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So we'll see. We'll see. Hmm. Going to be interesting who they get for Brave and the Bold. I mean, there's been rumors that Andy Muschietti was going to be possibly. I don't know. But I I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, But uh, yeah, Russo brothers, I'm like... I just don't know. I just don't know, but we'll see. We'll see. Speaking of James Gunn, he posted this today, obviously for the Superman anniversary, showing the cover of his Superman legacy script. And he wrote right here, I'm honored to be part of the legacy. And what better day than Superman anniversary day to dive fully into early pre-production on Superman legacy costumes, production design, and more now up and running. So apparently, ah uh, man, are we gonna get a cast? We're gonna get a cast list or a short list or what are we gonna get soon? I don't know. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. But it, it begins right there. So he posted this right here, and then naturally some people, of course, took to Twitter and just was like, oh, you know, and said all kinds of stuff, which we'll get to in a little bit here. But there's the cover of Superman Legacy right there when it comes to what James Gunn is doing. And if we go forward here, of course, we'll talk more about this. If you go forward, he actually said right here, because somebody was asking when it came to all this, that uh, curious if WB gave you notes and how did you receive them? And James Gunn said right here that no, WB wouldn't be giving notes on DC Studios Productions since we came up, came on board, came on board. We're two separate entities within WBD. Yes. This is what we've been wanting. I know some people are like, oh, God, oh, God, what's happening? It's like, no, this is good. This is a good thing. This is absolutely a good thing. This is what we wanted. Yes, I know. I get it. Some people, people didn't want James Gunn to be the head of uh, of DC Studios. Sure. He wasn't on top of my list either, but I'm okay with it. And then there's just like certain things. Uh, First off, you also have Jim Lee going up, up and away right here. Quote tweeting James Gunn. And then there was like uh, some more stuff when it came to um, what did he put right here? Let me scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Yep. Past all this. He posted this right here. It's interesting to see the numerous responses to my answer here about how notes work in Hollywood. From when I began writing, I have I have given my scripts and stories to many different trusted parties for notes Listening to constructive criticism is the lifeblood for any writer. I think I believe I told your members and your patrons that, yes, that, that he was getting notes from trusted individuals. And one of those trusted individuals, he says right here, 
So as head of DC Studios, I give the script to people I trust, like my exec, Chantel Nong, or DC Comics writer Tom King, and get their thoughts about what works well and what could work better so I can improve the script. To paraphrase Stephen King, first draft, first draft, door closed. Second draft, door open. Writing is communication, so this is important. All that said, I've never... As a director, been given notes I was ordered to take. So these are notes that the studio was like, you have to do this. Not from Universal on Slither, from Marvel and the Guardians films, nothing. I've always tried to take the notes that will actually make the film better, and I argue about the ones I think won't work. This process has worked for me because I've been blessed in the partners I've chosen to work with. We are all moving towards one thing, making the movie better. And I can put my ego aside and be open when I need to be and convincing when I need to be. I know this is not the case for everyone, and it wasn't always the case for me as a writer. Ooh, talking about that ego that he had when he was younger. Uh Uh-oh. Again, I'm blessed in this way, but that's how notes work. And I'm not going to suddenly stop taking them because I'm the head of a studio. Good. I'm glad that he is. And then somebody also asked... Will Jimmy Olsen be in the movie? And he said, of course. So Jimmy Olsen will be in the movie. Yeah, so there's that. Jimmy Guns, taking notes from certain people. Certain people. All right, moving along. So, uh, yeah, we'll talk more about this. Let's see, we got that. Jim Lee, we got a Galaxy Quest series in development, apparently, from Paramount Plus also. Uh, Neil Gaiman uh, reveals that the Sandman season two has been written. Scripts are written. We are cast in the first episode. We will be shooting. Sets are being designed. So awesome. And then speaking of David F. Sandberg, talking about filmmaking, this is a very good video right here if you haven't watched it. It's on awesome. The Boom. Basically Cameras just, uh, you know, infected. some of the things I did communicate <laughs> my vision from uh, directing. So using, uh, like, other things from other uh, other movies and shows. and Right before emphasize. he gets to So that's pretty cool. So another cool video by David F. Sandberg showing filmmaking. This is pretty sweet right here from uh, Joe, uh, Joe L. Edits right here, taking this shirt, making it live action. Jose, uh, the Jim Lee shirt, putting live action to it. Pretty sweet. We have uh, we have a movie. They're going to be making the uh, a-, a movie called Animal Friends. That's going to be starring Ryan Reynolds, Jason Momoa, Vince Vaughn, and Aubrey Plaza from Legendary. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, we got this shot. Look at shot. Look at that. Ah, see, the cow looks good. The cow looks good right here. The costume looks fantastic. Just saying. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, Lois Lane. She uh, debuted, obviously, in Action Comics number one. I had the reprint of uh, Action Comics that came out. What Well, you know, you can get the reprint everywhere. I had the reprint for a little bit, and I thought, oh, that's cool. So, uh, yeah, Action Comics number one. There's the first appearance of Lois right there. X will live forever. So, apparently, uh, you know... We're going to get them back. It's all coming back unless there's wind. So apparently he's teasing that. So that's pretty sweet. Angelina Jolie and Holly Berry going to star in uh, Mod vs. Mod. And apparently it's going to be like Bond vs. Born. So that's going to be good. Two uh, two directors or two uh, powerhouse actresses right there. Badasses. And then I had to do it, guys. I had to make this video right here. I can't play the song, though. I can't play the song because I'll get copyright. But I'm sure if you go to my if you go to my Twitter, I was going to have it as an opening bit. I was going to have it as an opening bit for tonight's stream because of what Zach was talking about with the Russo brothers while they were eating pizza. And, uh, you know, I'm obviously we're going to be talking about it as the second topic of this stream. But I'm already I've already created the thumbnail, which is this thumbnail right here. And yes, I I use uh, careless whispers. From uh, George Michael, you know, you know, the saxophone, you know, I'm never going to dance again. Guilty feelings got no rhythm. You know, you know the song, you know the song, but I couldn't play it. I couldn't play it. I, I'm not going to play it right now because, yes, I'll get the copyright on it because that saxophone is very recognizable. They'll pick it up just like that. So couldn't help. But when I was like thinking about it and I was making the I was making the thumbnail for it. Because it'll be a film junkie shot for tomorrow. I was like, all right. I, I, I just kept hearing that saxophone, so I did it. So I thought it was pretty funny. 
Ah, happy anniversary, uh, Dustin Macy right here. Made this pretty awesome uh, Superman art. That's pretty sweet. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. So, Ooh. never gonna dance again. I mean, see that? You know what's creepy? You know what's weird, guys? Creepy. Little creepy. When I was thinking about that and I was making the thumbnail, when I was putting, you know, Amy Adams, Lois, and then, you know, I was doing the Photoshop of that, and I kept on thinking of that song. I was watching the Giants-Marlins game. Sh shit you not, like two and a half minutes later, when somebody was coming up to bat, they played it in the stadium. All of a sudden, you hear the fucking saxophone, and I went, whoa, whoa, whoa. That was weird. That was weird. Absolutely weird. Absolutely strange. Jeez. Absolutely strange, so... Yeah, a little uh, ESP or something going on right there. But, yeah, that was, like, very... I, I, I was, like, just click, 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 and all of a sudden I hear... And I'm like, what the... Whoa, that was weird. That was very strange, but... Anyways. I'm never gonna dance. That song's gonna be in your head for the rest of the night. You're welcome. It's, it's already stuck in my head, so you have to you have to suffer with me. Anyways, it's still a good song. All right, let's talk about The Flash and those god-awful VFX shots. How dare they? Ugh. Ugh. Anyways, uh, thank you, Nicotina, for being uh, 23 months. And you're, uh, you know, and of course... Uh, promoting your stuff. I, I get what you're doing, right? I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's fine. But uh, yeah, uh, thank you for uh, being a member for almost two years. But uh, yeah, equals Project Justice League. Yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. But anyways, so let's talk about The Flash. Obviously, we talked about it on the Vodka stream a little bit, but I wanted to talk about it more and just kind of go through some things uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the footage that we saw and everything. Obviously, like I said, uh, Flash film news. Flash Film News is the best is the best place to go. They get they get all the clips, they get all the stuff, and of course this is where all the clips are coming from. And a lot of people are just keep complaining about the the VFX. Couple things when it comes to the VFX. First off, yes, you have to take it in consideration when it comes to compression. When it comes to Twitter, you have to take an account for that. There is something when it comes to that technology not quite there obviously when you see it on the big screen and you get you drop that frame rate it's gonna look a little better it's gonna look a little better i always hate it when the frame rate gets a little you know they speed up the frame rate and then of course the I, mean, I don't know about you but when it comes to certain shots i'm like i don't know they look pretty cool to me i know it's not gonna be for everyone i get it and i get it there's some people that are just gonna absolutely shit on this movie like crazy they are they're just gonna do it they just have a hate boner for it. I don't know. I don't know. Me, I'm just, I'm looking forward to it simply because I think Andy Muschietti is a talented filmmaker. I've been wanting this Flash film for how many goddamn years now? Uh, Ezra is a great f Flash, in my opinion. I loved how what Ezra did in Zack Snyder's Justice League. And not to mention the same VFX supervisors that did those beautiful scenes in Zack Snyder's Justice League are also doing The Flash. If you search on my channel, I interviewed both, Brian Hirota and, uh, and DJ. I interviewed them both. Hopefully, I can get them back to talk more about it after The Flash comes out, talk about some scenes, talk about a lot of things. But here we go right here. So we had this right here that showed this shot, which I think it's... Oh, look at that. I love that shot right there. That shot right there, that looks pretty cool. The boots light up. Really like that. Everything gets a little speedy right there. I thought that was pretty sweet. And then, of course, we get some more. We get some more action right here. We're not going to be able to fix this. Some more stuff up close. What? Yes. Okay. So I will say, I will say, I will say that Keaton's cow nose is a little pointy. You can see that right there. Yeah, this shot right here, they'll probably tweak it a little bit because, yeah, I don't know. Like the head looks a slightly off. I will say that, but I'm kind of wondering what's happening in that shot right there. Kind of wondering what's going on. But of course, everybody was talking about this, which of course was the thumbnail, which was this right here leading into the new trailer. Now we already saw this shot right here. And then of course, everyone was complaining about that, about Ben Affleck's Batman. And you know, a lot of people were just like, what the hell is happening right here? Again, you got to take in consideration of the compression and stuff when it comes to uh, Twitter and social media. That's also, you got to take it in part with that. 
Now, a lot of people are thinking that the entire cow is CGI, and I'm going, no, I don't, I don't believe this, the, the cow is CGI. I believe that Ben Affleck is, in fact, wearing the cow. It's the cape in the background that are CGI. And yes, there's like a, you know, a certain lighting on it that maybe they have to like run it through another like render to make it look a little bit more sharp. And I think hopefully, like when we see it on the big screen, it'll look a little bit better. You know, I know there's that discourse, but man, some people are just the hi the hyperbole that you see online where like I've literally seen like people will say it looks like the worst VFX ever. I, I always hate the fan hyperbole shit. Like, shut up. Shut up. It's not the worst. I mean, Jesus Christ. Have you watched an Ah Ball movie? Have you watched any of those? Have you watched the Resident Evil movies, sequels? Have you watched any of those? It's not the worst VFX ever. Shut up. And then look at that guy, Mr. Prune Face. Yeah. <laughs> now nah, he looks great. But I, you know, but I will say, yeah, the nose on the cow, it's a little interesting. I will say that, but it doesn't, it doesn't ruin it for me at all. But yeah, there's the goat. There's the goat right there. The second goat, I should say, that is Batman. But I don't know. I like these shots that like zoom in on the faces right there. But yeah, there's Keaton in the bat wing, of course, during the uh, Kryptonian fight right there. And then, of course, we got, look at that. Look at those. Look at those eyes. She's pissed. She's pissed about something. Pissed about something. I'm guessing this is when they take on Dark Flash, maybe? This seems like a Dark Flash moment. This is not the Kryptonian fight, for sure. But who knows? I don't know. But she looks pissed. She looks pissed. And then, of course, there's Zod. Good old Michael Shan. And I love the fact that they actually put uh, all the different uh, logos right there. There's the fat bat, super girl, then, of course, everything. So pretty cool stuff. But, yeah, to me, I'm like, all right, yeah, okay, I get I get why people, like, okay, I could see why it looks a little off because, yeah, it's screenshot, compression, there's that. Um, the cape is obviously CGI and the background CGI. The cow is not. So I don't know why people are freaking out about that. And then we got this little clip right here, too. Yes. Whoa, yeah, he just drops right out of that thing but it is interesting because this clip right here so we got what there's young barry i think this is young barry right here and, and this is not young barry i don't know what's going on because this the hair looks shorter with this barry i think this is might be young barry right? i don't know but he's wearing the new costume pretty interesting pretty interesting and then uh yeah we got supergirl right here we got some uh like in her cape she's got some design some like little design some kryptonian kind, kind of design that's happening within her cape right there which was reported by you know flash film news a while ago they posted that back in december of 2022 uh we got some uh, we got some statues right here for the flash which look pretty cool keaton's bats and ezra ezra flash and then there was this shot right here <laughs> which they got an exclusive of now, I will admit that his facial expression looks like he's trying not to shit his pants while he's running through the speed force. I'll give it to you that. I was like, okay, screenshots. But see, that's the thing is like when you screenshot VFX, sometimes it can come out a little wonky. It can come out a little wonky. I will say that. I always kind of hate it when, when I see stills or screenshots from a very VFX heavy shot. Kind of doesn't do it justice. Pardon the pun. But this is the shot right there where you actually see him, you know, going through right there, going through the... And yes, guys, and yes, sorry to, to tell you this, guys, but uh, Ezra, yes, is running the exact same way that Ezra ran in Zack Snyder's Justice League. I saw a lot of people talking about that because you know how people were not liking how he was running, even though that Zack Snyder and Ezra worked together on how they wanted specifically to have the Flash... You know, they actually did something where it was like, you know, he does like these stretches and they wanted to make it flow like almost like he's swimming or something like that. But, yeah, I saw some people, of course, comment about, oh, yeah, he still runs goofy, still running goofy, still runs like that. Oh, my God. I'm like, when was the last time you ran? Huh? When was the last time you ran? And there's some people that, uh, you know, specifically somebody, a uh, uh, Scoopy Pants, that was making fun of the whole thing. And I'm like, oh, when was the last time you went for a run? Huh? Middle school PE class? Huh? When was the last time you ran? You're going to make some of fun of somebody else's run? When was the last time you ran, huh? Something tells me it's been a while. 
Something tells me it's been a while. Get over it. It's unique. It's different. I actually like the way he runs. I like the fact, like, especially when it comes to that end scene in Zack Snyder's Justice League when he's swinging his arms. Because guess what? He's trying to put the world back together. I don't think you could, you, would you prefer them run how they did in the Flash TV show when they're just in front of a green screen, just doing this, just doing this? You prefer that? I don't know what you want. What do you want? Shut up. That's what I want. Anyways. Promo shots. Promo shots of all three of them right there. And, of course, this is part of the, uh, the, uh, the ring and the emblem right there. That looks pretty sweet. And more promo shots, which you guys could see. And then we got some comic book stuff. And then, yeah, happy birthday. We got all this and CinemaCon talking about that. And then, uh, yeah, we got this shot right here, which I thought, I, again, I think the costume looks really good right there. I think the, uh, the cowl actually looks good right there, too. So I don't know if it's been tweaked or not, but... I think it looks pretty sweet. But yeah, so there you go. The VFX, I mean, one of the things that, I mean, when it comes to Zach, obviously he's just, there's something about the way that he, and even the Russo brothers, which are going to be talking about in a little bit, is the fact that it's like, yeah, he knows, like when it comes to VFX with his shots, and I always say that he does a great job of always shooting with there's like, you know, you have, it's like dawn or dusk or at night, which can help things when it comes to VFX, when it's like, Daylight, it can get a little rough. It can get a little rough when it comes to daylight and VFX, obviously. But to be honest, like the shots that I've seen, I think, you know, to me, when it comes to the flash and some of these shots that we've seen, I think the colors are popping. And I think like, and, and again, the scope of fla of the flash movie, it just seems just huge. Like I want, I, I want to see this on a big IMAX and like those shots where they like zoom in on their faces, they just look just huge. And I just love that. And even Zach did something like that by making the IMAX format to make like these people seem huge. And that's one thing I do want to ask Zach if I, uh, I'm going to ask him about it again, if we like, you know, start talking about the flash again or something like that, whether it's on the vodka stream or just like in person, it's like, did he actually talk to Andy Muschietti when it came to this, because you better believe that there had to be some kind of conversation when it came to that. And the fact, again, that he's worked, that Andy Muschietti is working with Zach's guys, Brian and DJ, when it came to VFX supervisors, guys that he's worked with many times that are working on that film, which is why, again, I can't emphasize enough. That's one of the reasons why I'm excited about it and excited to see what, what they what they produce when it comes to the speed force and all the VFX. It's like, yeah, there still needs to be another run through. And of course, they're going to be like making sure that everything's nice and tight and everything is good. But you also got to take account of, the, of that compression too. But no matter what, you can explain this up and down. There are people that, I mean, we all have bias. We're just human beings. We all have our bias. If you hate Ezra or you hate the fact that the flash exists or you call it the flush or whatever the hell, you're going to shit on everything that comes out of it. I mean, I, 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 I put, posted a tweet that was like, you know, that was liar, liar. You know, Jim Carrey from Liar, Liar, when he takes a drink and he goes, oh, come on. It's like, yeah, if the Flash movie breathes, people just freak out about it. They want to shit on every little part of it, which doesn't even make sense to me, too, because especially for the people that want more Snyderverse, this is going to be the most Snyderverse movie out there. And then not to mention, they always, you know, throw hate at James Gunn, which is like, OK, I get it. You don't like James Gunn. But if you want more Snyderverse, he's going to be the guy. And he just explained to you today on a tweet that he's separate from Warner Brothers. It's DC Studio, separate thing. So maybe you should maybe not throw so much vitriol hate at him if you want more stuff with Zach. I don't know. Just seems a little counter counterproductive for whatever sake that you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to accomplish. Maybe throwing full on hate at James Gunn is not the way to go. Maybe not throwing full on hate about you know to the Flash is not the way to go. It's just me giving some advice. And being like, hey, maybe you should uh, not do that. Not do that. But, uh, you know, you see it all the time and naturally just. That's what I keep seeing on my timeline. Anyways. Russo Brothers and Zack Snyder. Pizza. Thank God. No pineapple on any of that pizza i know zach likes pineapple pizza but thankfully they were they were they had a, a detroit style pizza which i thought was cool deep dish 
I'm like, good. No eating pineapple. No eating pineapple when it came to this interview. But yes, the episode with Zack Snyder and the Russo brothers uh, showed up today. May I play with you, monsieur? A lot of this history is not known. I hope this won't be embarrassing for you. Okay, here we go. Sorry. So uh, we're not going to go through the whole thing, of course. I I did, like when I watched it earlier today, I did... uh, write down a couple of spots when it came to talking about certain things. So, I mean, if you haven't watched it, do yourself a favor. It's an hour and four minutes, only part one. It's only part one as well. So uh, there's going to be another part when it comes to this, because obviously there's just so much to talk about when it comes to this, this whole thing. But um, some things I wanted to emphasize was, I mean, obviously when he, when he starts talking about certain things with Justice League and what he actually wanted to do, because, you know, it's funny when we talk about certain things, especially in the fandom and you got the loud side of the fandom and they always go, no compromise, no compromise, especially when you bring up, hey, maybe possibly we can get a continuation of what Zack Snyder wanted to do either in comic book or or animation form. They're like, no, no compromise. He wants to do a live a- animation. I'm like, do you realize that there's, I mean, yes, it's good to be like no compromise and it's great. It's all fine and dandy, but a lot of compromise had to go through the process when it came to, I mean, maybe not so much when it came to Man of Steel and he had Christopher Nolan on his side to like back him up. But when it came to BBS, there was some compromise. When it came to Justice League, big time compromise because he, and he even talks about that. But like I said, great interview. Check it out. But here's uh, one of the things. Let's start off with this right here. The original script was much darker and weirder. Yes, it was. And then when Batman vs. Superman came out and the studio was like, It's not funny enough. People want funnier movies. They want funny stuff in it. No. We did did go back and do a big, kind of lighten the movie overall. (laughs) Why? (laughs) Add a little bit more laughs. How dare this talk speak to us like children? And I would say that Justice League, my cut of Justice League is a sort of is in between the, the we I always preserved some of the more intense stuff that I shot anyway. Yep. I thought they would that in retrospect they would maybe want. Making sure I of course had what was on the page, but we had this other script. I think in the original script there he is. Lois and Batman got together, you know, briefly. Oh. <laughs> there was like this whole yeah. there was this whole other thing that everyone was like, oh my God, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so oh we were we were By the way, uh, I love that. I you know, wish you did do that. <laughs> yeah. Because Superman was dead. I was yeah. like, you know, and Lois is a pretty amazing person. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So like But it also brings her into the story in a way. It's yeah, complex. Like, she's it's not surprising. Really, her part in Justice League is really we had written it, yeah. you know, especially since I had Amy. Yeah. And Amy's like a genius. Yeah. I really felt like needed more we should lean on amy you know because she's just a great actress and yes, think, exactly. uh, like a, a force of nature and so you know and i just thought it really felt like a and then i love the idea of like setting up this sort of concept you know it's sort of like when you're you know in the, in the i actually movie, like, like it too the just husband saying. goes off to war and he's dead and the wife moves on and then the husband appears yeah you know like i'm not dead yeah. I think I'm fine. Like, how do you deal one, with that? Yeah, yeah, how do you deal with that? And, and that was kind of what I, emotional, I was yeah. super into that concept, you know, that it's oh, a no, good Superman concept. can be brought it's back different. to life. <laughs> you know, obviously we have that, but yeah. Or the studio, and we, you know, and I mean, like, I'll be frank, Chris <laughs> and I are not the funniest guys in the world. We're talking about like, the you know, ha-has and everything like that, but yeah. So obviously talking about the fact that, and you know what the fact of the matter is, is like Zach still wants that concept. He still wants that concept. If you look on the shirt... If you look on the shirt, we got two shirts that still have that bat, that bat sperm, that bat nut on the shirt. You know, I think he really like. And to be honest, I mean, at first when I heard the concept, obviously it was on the uh, the storyboards. And again, if you watch Project Justice League, you know, watch that. If you haven't seen well all the, what the storyboards are, you know, he had, you know, that was part of it. The fact that he was like, yeah, you know, Superman's gone. And obviously Lois is heartbroken. And, you know, she's a great person. And. Bruce ends up falling in love with her because who would not fall in love with Lois Lane? Come on. So there was that whole aspect of it. And the fact that, yeah, she, instead of having, you know, Clark's baby, which ended up being the case, is the fact that she ends up having Bruce's baby, which would be an interesting concept, too, because of the fact of the matter is, is like, well, you know, Jonathan Kent and Martha Kent, I mean, they just adopted this child that came from another planet 
and it was like, okay, this is my, you know, this is my, ch and so now it'd be like, you know, Clark would have to raise a kid that's not essentially his, and it's only half, and it's not even, you know, it's not even half Kryptonian, it's a human child, so I mean, it would have been an interesting concept if you look at it from that perspective too, I don't know. There's like interesting ideas when it comes to uh, that whole thing. And I know a lot of people were not uh, expressing too much about it. And then, of course, I know some people were like freaking out because like when they the Russo brothers said they would have loved to see that. And Zach said one day and I'm like, yeah, maybe there couldn't be a one day where we see a story like that, whether it's told by Zach in I don't know which meet. I don't know. I know there's some people that immediately went to like, oh, my God, he just confirmed that it's going to happen one day and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like. All right, that's the way you want to look at it. Totally fine. I'm going to look at it a little bit differently, but anyways. Well, and then we're going to move on to, let's see, let me fast forward a little bit. Let's start it right about here. Oh, right, that's, that's where the big one is. I mean, that's, where, that's why I, I think where we've ended up with, I think right now we're in a really golden age of TV. So talking about sense that series and how you, know, TV you could take a story and flesh it out. better. At being, 100%. at being like showing you something not only that you've never seen before or catching you off balance or like making a turn that you didn't see coming, mm -hmm. you know. They're riskier. Yeah. They're way riskier yeah. and way kind of like, like Euphoria, for instance, I was watching and the show is just- Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like that show shouldn't exist, it's so good. Yeah. You know, it's giving and I just praise think that's to long thing. Like, form I watch that show and I go, this entertainment because it's not the same anymore. I don't know how many people like I don't know how many people that are still that were still in disbelief that they, they didn't think that Zack Snyder actually pitched Zack Snyder's Justice League, Zack Snyder's Justice League as a series, a mini series. When he pitched the Snyder Cut, he was like, well, we could do it like this because obviously you had the pandemic. You have HBO Max. So he pitched it as that. And obviously he broke it down like that there. I mean, I don't know how much pushback. That I got from that, from like that loud side of the fan. No, he would never do that. He's a filmmaker. No, Zack Snyder's an artist. Okay, he's an artist, and he likes to express the art in different, different ways. Photography, painting, movies, TV series. It's all there. This movie would never get made. Yeah, yeah like never get made. Yeah, talking kidding. about all that long form, which is great. Yeah, they talk about how he's a painter and everything like that. And it's just like, it's pretty sweet like how that, and then, uh, you know, you've brought up like Hundreds how, like some of this stuff would not work as movies. Because it's exactly for it and, and Squid Game, sh taking you to a place you just not, there's no way you have any idea like where you're going or what's happening. And, that, what, what's and I think that people, that's really- That's what of, they want. And what's compelling about that too is that like, it's interesting, the format, your cut is four hours long, right? The, Ant and I say this all the time, we grew up, on movies, we love movies. We love the movie experience. Doesn't mean that my kids have to love the movie experience, the movie going experience. They don't have to love watching things in a theater. They have very different uh, um, relationship to technology than exactly. I did as a kid. It's a different they world. They see things now. in a lot of different ways. But what's compelling about, and I think why he's saying TV's in a golden age, is that it is disrupting uh, from a format standpoint. It's 10 hours of content, it's eight hours of content. You get different emotional impact. Killing yeah. a character, five hours, something more innovative all that. and yeah, compelling. I, there is something really, um, I don't know, like when you see it in that format, you're like, okay, I get that. Like that. Like, it's eventized. It's, I'm yeah, here like, for like. But I, at home, you know, put in an intermission in a movie. Yeah. So he talked about the intermission, which we'll probably see, you know, we'll probably see that when we watch it, that the first full circle. Event. Originally, we had talked about doing it as a. It was going to be six parts released separately. There you go. But then there was like some, you know, legal rules about like. What you could do. Everyone with thought the, it was a TV show. Cast suddenly. contracts yeah, and, and all that stuff. You had yeah. to pay everyone like six times. And everyone was like, yeah. ah, don't do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it could have fit that format. For sure. Yeah. For sure. The visual component. So there you go. He did pitch it like that. We could. I mean, he's already said it before. He said it in other interviews before, but apparently it was like, no, no, that's not the case. But yeah, that is, in fact, the case when it came to pitching that right there. Um, let's see. Did I have another spot? Let me see. I thought I marked down another spot. Um, let's see. I think it was at... 
Uh, no, nah, I think that no. Wait a minute. I think it was right about. Oh yeah, he talked about this. This is pretty funny too. Ah, oh, we got a commercial. How At Full Sail, we take a unique approach to teaching the art of filmmaking. This is about filmmaking. Glass and what? You know, it's it's very. And if they don't pick up the glass in that moment. Yeah, but there's some of this your one favorite much, actors you've ever seen on with camera. You, know, so you can get to it from different ways. It just depends what you're. Yeah, I remember I was doing a. I was doing a. I did a commercial with Harrison Ford, right? Yeah. And Harrison was like, it was a. a it was a commercial for Lanche Libra. Which very. Is, it's a very funny Italian, story. It won't go over Italian the whole car. thing, but. Yeah, it's a very funny story that he talks about and how technical that Harrison Ford actually was when it came to knowing where the camera was going to be and everything like that. But yeah, if you haven't watched it, please watch it. Do yourself a favor. It's absolutely fantastic. And then, of course, um, we got some details when it comes to uh, the Full Circle event. We got a giveaway that's happening. Let me see if I can find it here. I should have had it already pulled up. Ah, if I could find it here. All right. I thought, uh, let me let me find it here. Let's see. I'll pull it up right here. Boop, boop, boop. Come on, come on. There it is. Okay. All right. So here's uh, and this is for everybody, not just people that are showing up to the event. This is for everyone when it comes to the full circle event. So we got the full circle AFSP fundraiser giveaway. Donate to the full circle AFSP fundraiser for a chance to win ten dollars or more. Man of Steel, Kal-El's star. Craft box signed by Zack Snyder, $25 or more. Zack Snyder's Justice League OST limited edition, 7 uh, LP box set, also signed by Zack Snyder, $50 or more. A 112th scale Batman vs. Superman Batmobile plate signed by Zack Snyder, $100 or more. Exclusive custom made a 1 6th scale full circle Heroes Park monument by Savage Sad, uh, Sad Boys Custom Studio plate. Signed by Zack Snyder. So, of course, go to uh, go to that link right there that has all that provided for you. And, uh, yeah, pretty awesome stuff. So, yeah, that's for everybody. You don't have to actually be attending the, the full-on event to, uh, to, to take part in that. And then I wanted to see where we're at when it comes to where how many... Let's see how many were sold. Hopefully, you guys got your shirt. If you haven't, uh, do yourself. Oh, yeah, 20. Look at that right there. So there's the shirt, full circle, the Snyderverse trilogy. And uh, we got over 2,000 sold. They wanted to get 10,000. It's already at 23,000. So good job, everybody. All right. Back to the goal real quick. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Can't wait to have that. Can't can't wait to have that and, uh, you know, have some more of that bat nut on my shirt. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Why, you know, Zach really likes the idea. I mean, it's like a, it is a full circle thing. You know, for, I know there's a lot of people. I mean, when I posted my video, when it came to the whole like, you know, Bruce Wayne and Lois thing, people don't like it. People don't like it. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but imagine if we saw that it would drive people crazy. And I think it's I think it's a cool concept to me. I think it's a cool concept. The fact that it's like, you know, you got a broken heart, Lois. Bruce falls in love with her. They end up, you know, you know, they end up uh, and, you know, some shit happens, you know. So deal with it. Deal with it. Zach seems to still want that because it's now it's going to be on two shirts, two shirts. Whoa. Okay, we're good. Saw my uh, the feed kind of uh, go a little crazy right there. So, but yeah, watch the interview. Can't wait for the second half. See what else he talks about. And uh, yeah, it's great. Nah, yeah, I know Ben. Ben doesn't like it. Ben doesn't like it. Well, I'll. Well, you know, you could send a message to Zach and be like, hey, do you have the link to that shirt, Dave? Yeah. Um, I mean, if anybody can actually post that link, I mean, I could post it actually right here. I could pull it up. I could pull it, pull it up. Yeah, I'll post it right there for you. If you guys need the link, if you haven't gotten it yet. Here we go. I'll post it right there in the chat. Anyone that likes it is banned. Oh, is she going to ban me? I know. Why are you guys so against? You guys are so against Broes. Don't be against Broes. What? Come on, that that just is just drama there. Can you imagine? I mean, I didn't like it at first either, but then I kind of was like, you know what? I think it's kind of a cool little idea. Not gonna lie, I think it's kind of a little cool idea. You know, 
And like I said, I'm never gonna dance again. Guilty feelings got no rhythm. Come on. That's gonna be in your head the rest of the night. Oh boy. Jonathan Majors. Oh man. It just keeps getting worse and worse. And you know, it's 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 kind of interesting to see the reaction because going back to talking about Ezra, a lot of people are comparing it to to the whole Ezra thing because oh yeah, Ezra assaulted somebody on camera which that was all dropped and that was all out of context. I, I love how people are still dwelling on that, that, that little video with the, the choking thing and like the person who actually posted that ended up pulling it down and saying, nope, sorry, sorry, nope, nope, sorry. You know, and there wasn't a, a, a lot of context when it came to that. Now, obviously Ezra is not an angel. We've seen some video where it doesn't show Ezra in the, in the best light, sure. But at the same time, when it came to a lot of the allegations, things got dropped, things got handled. Ezra apologized. There's all that stuff like that. So there are a lot of people comparing that to this Jonathan Majors thing when it came to like an ex-girlfriend and possible uh, abuse. Well, first off, I, you know, it, it is interesting because nowadays it just seems like it just seems like it used to be uh, innocent until proven guilty, but now it's guilty until proven innocent, which is always very interesting, but it's gotten worse because now like, yeesh, now he's losing out on roles. Apparently his, uh, his representation dropped him, but here's the latest right here. This deadline article written right here. No, 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 oops, sorry. What the hell? Turn that off. There's no, there's no cheering for this. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> little foul up right there. We're not cheering here. This is not. This is actually more, more of that. Yeah. Anyways, Hollywood's weariness uh, of Jonathan Majors grows. Actor no longer starring in the Man in My Basement movie cut from Texas Rangers ad campaign. So exclusive. Jonathan Majors has been dropped from a slew of projects we hear on the good authority, including uh, protagonist pictures, feature adaptation, uh, the ones that we just talked about. The latest on Majors comes in the wake of yesterday's news that his manager, Entertainment 360, and publicist, the lead company, have cut ties with the actor who is facing domestic violence allegations in New York City after a March 25th incident involving a dispute with a 30-year-old woman. The unnamed victim was taken to the hospital with minor injuries to her head and neck, according to the authorities at the time of the incident. Majors is scheduled to appear in court May 8th after being charged by uh, NYCDA. Majors was set, of course, to do all that. So, yeah, it's just not looking uh, not looking good for Mr. Majors right now. And that kind of sucks because, man, he, he was just blowing up right now, of course, with Creed 3. And, of course, he was going to be Kang. He's going to be the new big baddie in the MCU. And now all this kind of comes to be. But, again, um, I don't think uh, – I just – I'm just kind of wondering. I mean, obviously, we saw, like, there was a release of uh, some text messages, which still was very weird and very interesting. And then, of course, he called – the cops said first to, I don't know. It's all a very weird situation. I haven't looked too much big time in the situation when it comes to all that. And then of course, when it comes to the text message screenshots that they posted, but, um, Again, I'm just kind of going like, all right, well, Marvel hasn't said anything when it comes to this, when it comes to him and com comes to Kang and what's the future of Kang and him playing Kang. They haven't dropped them yet. I hope that they're actually waiting until you know, the trial, I think it's kind of shitty that some of this other stuff is like, they're just automatically just dropping ties. Like, whoa, we're gonna, you know, you're guilty. You're guilty. We're going to drop you. Sorry. It's like, no, you should actually wait until all the evidence is out there. And then maybe it could all be cleared up before you start dropping him and start before you start, you know, just before the guy starts losing his livelihood. Like I'm not, I'm not saying that, Oh no, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. I'm not, def I'm just looking at it. Hey, can we just pump the brakes a little bit? Let's wait till May 8th and see what happens. Let's, let's see what happens there first before we start just ruining this guy's life. You know, that's just the way I'm looking at it. That's just the way I'm looking at it when it comes to that. So, but Marvel really hasn't said anything and I'm, I'm sure they're just kind of waiting waiting for it so yeah it's not looking good right now though just not looking too good also i saw some bs uh you know just uh and i love it i love it there's a freaking twitter handle that said like oh yeah the rumor has it that yeah they're already looking to recast kang and ray fisher's at top of the list yeah i saw that the other day i went jesus christ this 
These people out there. B -b Bullshit! I don't think Ray Fisher would actually want to jump into that. I don't know. To me, it just seems like Fisher's probably done in like big studios, at least for right now. You know, he wants to do work that he's passionate about. But I mean, I wouldn't hate it, though. I mean, if it ends up being the case and they do cast Ray Fisher as king, I mean, that would be pretty sweet. But I don't think that's actually happening. So, but yeah, not looking good for Jonathan Majors. But, you know, we can only hope for the best. But I mean, obviously, if he did do something, then sorry, dude. We're not going to be on your side when it comes to it. <sighs> All right. Strike. And not the strike that you get in bowling or not the strike that you, uh, you know, you get in baseball. You get in baseball. So, but yeah, rider strike imminent happening. Uh-oh. I mean, Jesus, Hollywood's just kind of in shambles right now. I tell you what. And I've been hearing about this because I've been talking to my buddy who's in that world. And he's been warning me about it, talking about this. I mean, obviously, the pandemic really screwed up Hollywood and a lot of things that are happening when it comes to Hollywood. Streaming, theatrical, all the stuff. It's just been a, a, a pretty big mess. And now we have this. Thank you, uh, Southbound. Much love. Much love to you. Much love. So here's the article that came out, uh, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. Yep, yesterday. So here's the article right here. Writers authorized strike. Nearly 98% support work stoppage. Eee! That's not good. 98% not good. The Writers Guild of America says that it set a new record for support and participation with a referendum uh, with about 79% of eligible members voting. Hollywood's writers have spoken. They are prepared to strike if necessary. This is not the first time it's happened. Not the first time it's happened. Obviously, we know like in 2008, that all kind of happened too. In a record-setting vote that concluded on Monday, 97.85% of eligible members of the Writers Guild West and East, apparently they're like what? Are they like the rappers? Or like West Side and East Side? Anyways, uh, to authorize a strike... While 2.15% voted against, the total of 9,218 writers particip participated in the vote, or nearly 79% of the members eligible to take part. According to the Guild, this level of particip participation and support is unprecedented for a strike authorization vote for the union. These results do not ensure a work stoppage will happen, but instead give the union the option to strike if labor leaders decide one is necessary in an ongoing negotiations with studios and streamers over new contract. And yeah, they talk about that. And apparently it's like, meanwhile, earlier Monday, they're prepared to results and all this stuff. And they were talking about what May 1st, I think it was um, strike since. Yeah, they've been talking about that. Oh, March 20th. They talk about that. But I think it was like May 1st, something like that. But yeah, not too good. I will say, like, from what I've gathered and what I've heard is, like, the fact of the matter is, is, like, if uh, if things aren't already in pre-production, like, greenlit and ready to go, anything else that might be in development that isn't officially greenlit yet, that might just not go anywhere for a little bit, depending on whether they negotiate, which they probably will. They're going to have to cut costs. That's the fact of the matter. Pay your writers more because they're probably getting shit. Pay the, pay the producers and some of these directors that are getting way too much, you know, take a little bit from them, put it over to the writers, because guess what? They're part of it, too. Maybe that's going to be the case. Who knows? But, yeah, they're going to have to cut costs to productions to negotiate deals when it comes to this. But, yeah, anything that's not fully, if it's just in development, not fully green yet, green lit yet, that's probably going to stop. But probably things that are, you know, already in that pre-production stage and ready to go, that's going to be happening. But, yeah, talk about bad timing when it comes to... Uh, you know, Warner Brothers and DC trying to get their shit going. You know, it's like, we don't need this right now. But then again, it's like, what, their writer is James Gunn and James Mangold right now, apparently. But they do have a writer's room. Who knows if that's what's going to be affected when it comes to that. But there you go. It's imminent, but hopefully they, they, they strike a deal. I mean, it's not like this hasn't happened before. So, all right. How are we doing out there? We go, we good. We everybody good. Notice, I mean, the the stream is just working pretty, you know, fluidly. Like I said, yeah, just needed to uh, go back to 1080p. That's it. That's all I needed to make everything nice and smooth. Okay, let's get to uh, some questions right here. Let's get. We're just gonna do Twitter. I didn't post on uh, YouTube, so we'll just uh, look at the Twitter questions. Right, meow. All right, so we got Jordan Davis. I watched the Russo brothers 
and Zack Snyder roundtable discussion, and it was very knowledgeable about filmmaking. What two directors would you like to see talk about directing and making movies? Um, I mean, Tarantino, um, Fincher. I would like to see that too. Uh, you know, Nolan. I mean, there's just so many, you know, different ones right there. And I would just uh, deny Villeneuve, you know, just pretty much all the big heavy hitters. I'd like to hear him talk about all all of that. So, you know, get different styles, different directors. I would love to uh, hear what they have to say. Uh, Shahib says right here, Dave, my question comment right here. If we can't, don't want the Snyderverse to be completed animation graphic novel, then why don't we get it as a game? Did anyone think of that? I mean, sure, it's a type of animation, but still, why not? I bet everyone would be okay with that. Yeah, I mean, that would be cool too. That'd be different. But at the same time, it's like not everybody plays the games. Um, I, I mean, I would gladly, that'd be pretty sweet to play out the story through video game. But I think, you know, not a lot of people will jump at that. And if you want to just want to see the story, I think, you know, if we can't get live action, then, hey, animation, graphic novels, it's like, you know, it's a good thing, too. Andrew Casali, I don't really care if the VFX are bad in these people's eyes. They're probably just salty Snyder fans. Ooh, well, some of them are. Yeah, some of them are. Uh, some of them just don't like Ezra and hate, and hate the Flash and whatever the hell. All I'll care about is Michael Keaton's Batman being the MVP, helping the Flash and Supergirl save the world and returning after 30 years since 1992. Yep. For sure. Darkness under the wind. Question one. If the Flash has a post credit scene, would you like it to be about the introduction of a version of a character in the DCU? Question two. Well, first question. I hope there's not a post production. You know, I hope they don't inject something like that, to be honest. But then again, maybe they have to. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I, I don't really want that. I wouldn't really want that. I don't want that. <laughs> to be honest. So question two, would you be okay with Ezra Miller's flash dying after restarting everything, creating in the DCU? I mean, I'd be okay with that too. I mean, if he ends up doing that, I don't think that'll happen, but you never know. Um, but I wouldn't bother me because I don't think they're going to continue with Ezra after this. This is what I tell the, the, the haters too. I'm like, yeah, that we're trying to compare the, the Ezra and Jonathan major situation. I'm like, do you guys really think that Ezra is going to stay as a flash? And do you think he's getting all kinds of job opportunities? When have we heard anything that Ezra's doing after the Flash? But of course they want to they want to put it as a race thing because oh yeah you know Jonathan Majors is a black guy of course that's why that's why they're doing it because of that and blah blah this and of course they want to ignore all the details they just want to play the freaking race card it's really stupid Kenny Dave I'm excited for the DCU everything James Gunn has said I'm liking Superman Legacy and Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow are the two projects from the slate I'm super excited for love my Kryptonian fam yeah it's gonna be interesting to see what happens especially with Supergirl. Cooper Knox, so if Guardians 3 doesn't do that hot at the box office, how will that affect James Gunn's tenure of being the captain of the DC ship? I think it'll do just fine. If it does, it's going to do better than Ant-Man for sure. I, it's already uh, tracking at what, 130 domestic or 130? I don't know. I think it's going to do fine because we'll see when it comes to the reviews and word of mouth. It'll definitely have more legs. But yeah, I don't think it's going to make a billion dollars, but I think it'll do, do just fine, to be honest. Patton92, hey Dave, something a bit different here. Do you think the streaming bubble has burst? Apparently Disney is moving to a theatrical digital purchase physical plus model, suggesting even discs and licensing to other digital stores is more profitable than trying to do it. Well, yeah, because the pandemic, the pandemic is what they, they thought like, okay, if nobody's going to the movies, we have to utilize streaming. But streaming ended up not being as good as they were hoping that it would be. That's why we're seeing like the tiers change and the pricing change and rebranding things. And then, of course, emphasizing the fact that, yes, going to the movie theaters is the best way to get the most profits. But, you know, I think it was just a pandemic. Devon Wooter, hey Dave, sorry about your stream yesterday. It's all right. Stream today is going well. Do you think Marvel will fire Jonathan Majors if they can? Uh, can uh, if they can, you raise your glass for celebrating? Uh, oh yeah, I don't have a glass, uh, but I mean, we'll see. I think they might be waiting to uh, you know when he appears in court. So uh, raise your glass for celebrating Superman 85 birthday. And do you think the Russo brothers will direct a DC movie? I, I just, I, I want different directors. I really want different directors. 
the Russo brothers are, you know, they, they, they made a couple of the biggest fucking comic book movies of all time. Let's just get somebody else in there. You know, I don't want the same directors, uh, doing the stuff. We've already got James Gunn that's making the transition. I don't want, I, I just, I'd rather have somebody different, but then again, I want Sam Raimi who's done all kinds of CBM stuff. So I guess I'm kind of a hypocrite when I say that, but I, I mean, Sam Raimi's just one. I don't think it's actually going to happen, but it would be cool to get like different directors. It would be. Mr. Uh, Nobody. Hey, Dave, given that the Flash is a plot device to reboot the DC verse, doesn't it mean that all the DC films are in the multiverse so it won't really close the door on previous DC films? Exactly. It'll leave it open. Leave that Snyderverse in a bubble over here. Um, but rather put them in another universe uh, like Keaton's. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I that's what I've been saying. When people have been like going like, oh, they're going to erase the Snyderverse. I'm like, no, I think they're going to keep the Snyderverse like over here. It's going to be OK. Like, like I said, I just I never I was never one of those people that was crying like they're going to erase everything. It's like, no, first off, you're never you're always going to be able to watch the, the trilogy. And I don't I think it's preserving it. To be honest, it's keeping it over here. It'll keep it over here. And if they revisit it later, hey, guess what? That'd be pretty sweet. Preserve it over here. Why not? I think we can all agree with that, or most of us can agree with that. So after the shit animated movie, oh, no. what are we talking about? Do theaters first and then stream three. I know, exactly. Well, I think when it comes to the whole theatrical and streaming, I mean, if if the movie blows up, like Super Mario Brothers, keep that in the theaters as long as possible. That's making a bunch of money in the theaters. If a movie blows up like Top Gun Maverick did, keep it in the movie theaters as long as possible and soak up every dollar that you can. But if the movie doesn't do well, throw it up on uh, streaming. I mean, you can already, I mean, Shazam's already going to be coming on with streaming. There's movies that quickly go to streaming because, you know, they don't last. They don't have the legs. So if a movie doesn't have legs, put it on streaming. But if a movie has legs and it keeps on going, keep it in the theaters as long as possible. And hopefully they do that for, uh, for Mario. So, all right, guys. Well, this stream went well. Thank God. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know it's Tuesday. I'm like, I mean, I guess I'll have a stream tomorrow. I mean, hopefully there's news to talk about. So I guess we'll we'll see. But uh, yeah, we'll do that. And then, of course, we'll have the members only stream right after it. So if you want to be part of that, become a member of the channel. Do all that. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like thumbs up before you leave. Share the stream, too, if you want to. Please, that always helps. Do all that. And uh, yeah, we'll do a stream tomorrow. We'll see what the news is out there. We'll figure out something to talk about. Me trying to figure out something to talk about? What? You shit, you say. Anyways. All right, guys. You guys are awesome. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Talk to you guys later. Mm-hmm.